in the program. Federal government task motorists on cooperation with traffic managers as rehabilitation works commence on Third Mainland Bridge. On the foreign scene, Ethiopia, Somali land, army chiefs met amid regional tensions. A sport Falconer's head coach selects 19 players ahead FIFA under 20 qualifier against Burundi. Now the details. I am Taiwo Barua. Over 1,000 people have been empowered by the Lagos State Government through the Micro Enterprise Support Initiative Program of the Ministry of Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation. Speaking at the event held in Ikeja, Lagos State Government, Babaji De Songulu said, his administration will continue to prioritize youth and women empowerment to reduce poverty and uplift the living standard of residents of the state. Governor Somulu, who was represented by his deputy, Abafemi Hamzad, also pledged his commitment towards enhancing skills acquisition programs and adult education to empower residents. So I want to urge you to please utilize these tools effectively because it is a way for us to make sure that we create wealth among our citizens. So you are expected to make judicious use of these resources so that you can always also create employment for others. Earlier in her welcome address, Commissioner for Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Balaji Dada explained that the initiative will encourage financial independence of the individuals and motivates them to contribute to the economic development of the state. All of this training and empowerment is for financial sustainability so that they can support their family and contribute to the social economic development of the state. And the state here, the Lagos State Government, has zero tolerance to idleness of any form. The graduates from 19 skills acquisition centers across the state were given startup packs to further boost their skills. The Lagos State Ferry Services Lack Ferry has urged residents to embrace water tourism for all their celebrations for maximum relaxation and as a way to enjoy nature. Managing Director of Lack Ferry, Ladi Balogo, who made the call at the Ignite, the Waterways event said, water tourism is becoming popular in Lagos, with many realizing that they do not have to catch fun only in a hole or on the ground, but on the waterways as well. Balogo, who was represented by the Director of Administration and Human Resources of Lack Ferry, Bumi Mofulewi, said the agency will conform with the intermodal transportation agenda of the Lagos State Government as water transportation is an integral part of the agenda to reduce traffic on the roads. On his part, Lag Ferry's head of operations, Simatsa Amos, said with 24 routes and 16 jetties, Lag Ferry intends to improve its capacity to attract more customers through programs that will allow them to visit different relaxation tourist centers across the state on a monthly basis. Lagos State's government has urged teachers, non-teaching staff, students and pupils in the state to make the year 2024 count for excellent performance in their various teaching and learning deliveries as schools resume for the second term of the year 2023-2024 season. The Commissioner for Basic and Secondary Education, Jami Ali Balugo, gave the advice when he visited some schools in Lagos to monitor student and pupils' resumption for the second term. Ali Balugo articulated a wish of the government to ensure that the limited resources of the state are deployed to ensure the safety of student, pupils, and school personnel in the new year. He also restated the resolve of Governor Babaji De Sonwulu's administration to upscale school feeding programs in public schools to boost pupils' welfare, improve attendance, and reduce the menace of out-of-school children in Lagos State. Now to the rest of the stories. The federal government has appealed to motorists to cooperate with 
traffic managers deployed to ensure heat free movement as rehabilitation of the third Minan Bridge commences. Federal Controller of Works in Lagos, Olukoredi Kesha, made the appeal while supervising the closure of the Iyano Wurushuki Adeniji Adeli bound section of the carriageway to traffic in company of the Lagos State Commissioner for Transportation, Oluwashin Oshiemi. Commissioner of Police, Adego Kinfayu Ade, Sector Commander, Federal Relative Corps, Mabatuni Farin Luye, and Acting General Manager of Lagos State Traffic Management Authority, Olale Kumbakari Oki. Kesha explained that the closure of the section of the bridge would be in two phases, each scheduled to last for six to eight weeks. According to her, the closure is part of the ongoing work that started in November 2023, focusing on fixing the ramps and some repairs of the bridge, including the under deck and sub water sections. Keisha explained that the scope of work would include complete removal and replacement of the asphalt of the deck to the standard two inches to make motoring smoother and safer on the bridge. Some expansion joints have been identified as being defective. We're going to remove them and then we'll replace them during the period of these repairs. So once we are done with that, while we're doing that, we'll start the cap painting, the medium painting, the street lights, and then the replacement of the missing gatherers. And if time and money permits us, we intend to put CCTV station on Danit's third mainland bridge to act as surveillance for the bridge so that we can protect one of the major infrastructure we have in Nigeria. On his part, Lagos State Commissioner for Transportation, Oluwashin Oshiemi, expressed satisfaction with the collaboration between the state and the federal government, stating that no fewer than 250 LASMA personnel we have been deployed to work with road safety officials. Like it's been mentioned, um, a lot of collaboration has been put in place. On the former side, we have men on ground. We have well over 250 men from last month. Uh, even the gym last month is there present. Um, the whole idea is to ensure that, yes, there will be some bit of discomfort, like uh, Mrs. Kesha said, but we we'll would ensure that we we'll make it as uh, less stressful as possible. To the collaboration with police as well, that, of course, guarantees safety as well. So I'm sure we'll be good. The mainland inbound island movement will be opened from midnight to noon. How those who intend to come from the island to the mainland are advised to use a co bridge. Also, from noon to midnight, motorists would be able to access the bridge from the island to the mainland. While motorists from the mainland heading to the island will have to use a co bridge. President Bola Tinobo has approved cost cutting measures that involves slashing official entourage on local and international travels by 60%. Special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Ajari Ingalale, stated this while briefing the State House correspondents at the presidential villa in Abuja. Ingalale said the directive applied to the offices of the president, vice president, wives of the president and vice president, ministries, departments and agencies. On international trips, the president directed that no more than 20 individuals be allowed to travel with him. The number will be cut down to five in the case of the wife of the president. The number in the entourage on official international trips for the vice president and wife of the vice president was also reduced to five. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC in Kano State, has completed necessary arrangement for the conduct of the by-election for the State Assembly slated for February 3. INEC resident electoral commissioner in the state, Abdul Zango, mid the snow and while addressing stakeholders at the commission's headquarters in Kano. Zango said the elections will be conducted in 66 polling units across the six local government areas of the state. He lauded the police for providing the required security personnel who will provide security during the by-election. In foreign news, the army chiefs of landlocked Ethiopia and self-declared Republic of Somaliland have been discussing military cooperation as concern grows over a deal that could give Ethiopia a naval base on the Gulf of Aden. The two sides signed a deal on 1st of January to give Ethiopia commercial and military access to the sea. Somali called it an act of aggression as it considers 
Somaliland as part of its territory and has vowed to defend its sovereignty. Ethiopia's Field Marshal Behanu Jula spoke with Somaliland's Major General Nu Smile Tani about possible ways to work together. It will interest you to know that Somaliland, a former British protectorate, succeeded from Somalia in 1991, but is not internationally recognized as an independent state. In sport now, Falconet head coach Chris Danjuma has selected 19 players who will file against Burundi's under-20 girls in FIFA under-20 Women's World Cup final qualifying fixture. The team is scheduled to travel out of Nigeria for the first leg encounter. Build for Dar es Salaam, Tanzania on Sunday. The return leg will take place at the MQ Abiola National Stadium, Abuja, on Saturday, January 20. And that's it on the news at 6, but just before we go, speed thrills, but kills. Avoid excessive speeding. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms. X, formerly Twitter, Lagos Traffic 961. Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961. Watch us live on Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM. On YouTube, subscribe and watch all our previous programs and news on our channel, Traffic Radio 961. Did you know? That's the song when the administration began. Community Tourism Initiative. You can get more details on the Lagos State Government website. To end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. Over 1,000 people have been empowered by the Lagos State Government through the Micro Enterprise Support Initiative Program of the Ministry of Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation. The federal government has appealed to motorists to cooperate with traffic managers deployed to ensure each free movement as rehabilitation of the third million bridge commences. We also told you that the army chiefs of landlocked Ethiopia and self-declared Republic of Somaliland have been discussing military cooperation as concern grows over a deal that could give Ethiopia a naval base in the Gulf of Aden. In sport, Falconet head coach Chris Danjuma has selected 19 players who will file out against Burundi's under-20 girls in a FIFA under-20 Women's World Cup final qualifying fixture. For contact with the newsroom, send a message to Lagos Traffic Radio at lagosstate.gov.ng. That ends the news broadcast compiled by Adesua Ejoyoka. I am Taiwo Barua. Thank you for listening. Good evening. Thank <laughs> you.